There are many people in the body of Christ who are dealing with suppressed sexual sins. In some cases, the behavior is a thing of the past. In others, it is a hidden habit that the person wars privately against. As an example, 64% of Christian men view pornography at least monthly, according to a survey conducted by the Barna Group. That is way too many Christians. What we don't understand is the hidden tax placed upon our ministry for these sexual sins. Emerson once wrote, I cannot hear what you are saying because what you truly are is screaming in my ears. I believe this is doubly true for Christian ministries. In the best-selling book, Blink, Malcolm Gladwell presents the following thesis. Humans have the ability to use limited information from a very narrow period of experience to come to a conclusion. In other words, you intuitively know a lot about a person in a blink of an eye. I believe this is especially true regarding sexual sins. For this reason, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The spiritual imprint of sexual sins is broader than just physical actions. It is inadvertently expressed through the wanting eyes. It is felt through hugs that look innocent enough from a distance. It is even expressed through skittishness over otherwise harmless behaviors. We tell on ourselves every day. I firmly believe that those seen but unseen cues hurt Christian unity. Matthew 24 and 12 reads, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. A precursor to love and unity is trust. Our words and actions must align with Christ. But if people can sense that there is something else going on within, they will subconsciously mistrust. Intuition is not as accurate as the spirit, but it is God-given. With this understanding laid out, it should be apparent that legalism is not the answer for our sexual sins. Yes, legalistic rules can keep us safe for a season. That is good, but we must ask ourselves, are we free from the love of sin? However, the only thing that can free us for eternity is Jesus. In our internal prayer life, we have to do more than just promise the Lord, I'll never do it again. The long-term answer is not just stop doing this or that. The long-term answers are, why do I do this? Is the way that I view sex in line with God's truth? Is the way that I view others in line with God's perspective? Or the way that man has taught me? We as a community have to get past the actions. We have to ask one another, why did you commit the action? Why did you believe the lie?